Alright guys, so what I'm going to talk about in this video is molecular geometry and specifically what we're talking about is covalent bonding. And so what I'm going to need to do first is teach you guys how to draw the Lewis dot structures for molecules because we've already talked about drawing the Lewis dot structures for elements. Now we're going to have to draw them for molecules. All right, So there are going to be three specific steps that we're going to do. So the first step, I'm going to outline them right here. Your first step, the first step that you need to do, okay, is determine the number of valence electrons for your molecule. So determine your number of valence electrons. Okay. And we'll do that in a second with a couple of example problems that we're about to do. All right? Okay, step two, you need to draw a single bond between each of the elements that you have. So step two, draw a single bond between each element. Okay, and the third and final step so step three, I'm going to put right here, okay? Step three, you need to make an octet for every element. And I'll explain what that means. We've already actually looked at it, but I'll re-explain it. So make octet for elements except for hydrogen. And hydrogen, guys, only needs to share two electrons. So I'm going to say only needs two electrons. Of course, there are going to be exceptions. There are going to be a lot more um, when you guys get into, if any of you guys are planning on taking AP Chemistry. We're not going to get into a lot of them. Okay. Um, but we are going to see a couple of exceptions as we go along. All right, so let's do an example before we get overwhelmed by the number of steps we have to do. All right, step number one, we've got HCl right here. All right, and I'm hoping you guys are being able to see this pretty clear, nice and clearly. Okay, so you've got HCl. My first step is to count my number of valence electrons. All right, so hydrogen has one valence electron, while chlorine has seven. So HCl has a total of eight. I'm gonna say eight valence electrons. So I've just added up my number of valence electrons. It's totally, perfectly fine to do. All right. Now for, I'm gonna do my step two, which is draw a single bond between each element. So here I've got my hydrogen, and I'm gonna bind it to my chlorine. Remember, this line represents two electrons. And those two electrons are being shared by hydrogen and chlorine. It doesn't mean that they're being shared equally, but it doesn't mean that they're being shared. All right, so here, this line represents two valence electrons. All right, and remember from step three, it says make, for your step three, it says make an octet for all elements except for hydrogen. Okay, so chlorine, for example, chlorine wants eight valence electrons around it, so we need to make an octet for chlorine. However, hydrogen is happy with just those two electrons that it's sharing. So leave, always leave hydrogen alone. We're not going to put anything else around hydrogen, just leave it alone. But chlorine needs a total of eight around it, eight valence electrons. So it's got two here. We're going to draw two more here, so that's four, six, and eight. So there we've got eight valence electrons around chlorine. Okay. Hydrogen only has two, but hydrogen only wants two, and so we're done. All right, let's look really quickly at CH4. All right, so carbon has four valence electrons plus, well, there are four hydrogens, so I'm going to say four times. Hydrogen has one valence electron, so one, so there are a total of eight valence electrons again. Okay, so I've done step one, let's do step two together. Okay, so I'm going to draw 
carbon and I'm going to draw it bound to my four hydrogens. So I'm going to draw one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, and one hydrogen here. And what you guys should notice is my carbon, remember each line represents two valence electrons that are being shared. So here are two, four, six, eight electrons. So carbon's happy. My hydrogens are happy because they only want two to be bound. And notice I've used eight valence electrons already. Two, four, six, eight. I'm done with that. All right? So this would be really nice and easy if I could finish right when I was done with my Lewis dot structure. If I could just draw my HCl like this, if I could draw my CH4 like this and call it a day's work well, what actually happens is what we call the Vesper theory. And what the Vesper theory is, it's called our valence shell electron pair repulsion. So I'm going to write it here. Valence shell electron pair repulsion. Okay, that's what that stands for. Sorry, there's not that much space, guys. Okay. And what that tells us is that electrons stay as far apart from each other as possible. As far apart as, sorry, possible. All right, let's look at this. Sorry, it's not really legible, but they it tells you that electrons stay as far as part far as far apart as possible. So let's look at it really quickly. First of all, um, I'm showing you all of these different geometries where the x's are. We don't have to consider it, but let's look, for example, at the first one. You see an a and a b. What this is telling you is here, and I have the model for you right here, here is your A atom, whatever that may be, let's say for example it is your hydrogen, and here is your chlorine. And what your Vesper theory tells you is your electrons are going to be as far apart as they could possibly be because what's happening is their electrons are repelling one another. So obviously your we had said this, I had said this was hydrogen, your hydrogen is not going to be right up against your chlorine, right? Because that makes absolutely no sense. No, instead it's going to be as far away as possible at actually a perfect 180 degrees. And so the shape that we call this, we call this a linear shape. And it exists when you either have one or two things around your central atom. So your central atom here is A. And you can have two things, two B's or one B. Okay, and there's 180, it makes 180 degrees. It makes this perfect linear okay, shape. All right, let's look when you only have three things around your central atom. Now, this is kind of funky because the mo my model kit doesn't really want that to happen, so I'm going to have to create it on the fly. But what happens is it creates something that looks like this. Here are three things. Notice it's not four things that are going to be bound. It's only going to be three. And so what it creates is something that looks like this. And what we call that, we call that trigonal planar. Because it's in the plane of the paper, for example, but it's trigonal, meaning three. Okay, so this is trigonal planar. And it makes a 120 degree angle. All right, let's look at the next one. If you have three things bound to your central atom, remember your central atom is your black atom. Okay? However, you have one pair of lone electrons. And we'll look at that more and more when you have lone electrons. We haven't actually looked at that yet. But imagine that there are electrons bound to your central atom, and then you have two other things bound to it what you get as a result is this shape. And what this shape is called is bent. Okay? And all you need to know about the angle of bent is as a result of the fact that you have those extra electrons right there, 
Okay, it's gonna push these two uh, atoms down more than if it were trigonal planar. It's gonna push them down even more because those extra electrons are gonna repel the electrons from this atom even more and more and more. All right, so this is gonna be, the angle of this is gonna be less than 120 degrees. Okay, let's look at four. I'm just running through these guys. We're gonna get tons of practice with this. Okay, I kinda destroyed this. But if you have four atoms bound to your central atom, what you get, I'll zoom out, is this shape. And we call this shape tetrahedral. Okay? And the angle, okay, I'll scroll in again. This is, and we'll play with these in class, I promise. Okay, tetrahedral, four things bound to the central atom. Okay, and the angle of tetrahedral is 109 degrees. Okay. Alrighty, guys. We're going to look at two more really quickly. Um, let's look at what happens when you have just one pair of electrons coming off of it. So instead of having four atoms, you're just going to have three bound. And what you're going to have instead at the very top is you're going to have a lone pair of electrons that are pushing down your other atoms, right? Your other three. And so what you get is this shape right here. And what we call this shape right here, if you notice, it's kind of like a pyramid. Well, it is. That's what we call it. We call it... Oh, sorry. We call it trigonal pyramidal. Still trigonal, but instead of being planar, instead of being in the plane of the page, it's trigonal pyramidal. Okay, and as a result of those lone pairs of electrons, just like before, it's going to push down those atoms even more, and therefore your angle is going to be even is going to be less than 109 degrees. Okay. Let's say, for example, I have two pairs of electrons, of unshared electrons. I, have, I can represent them with the little... These guys right here. I'm going to zoom out. So imagine the springs are my electrons and these are my atoms. Okay, I've got one more shape here to give you guys and it's bent. It's another bent, but this time I have four things bound to my central atom, one, two, three, four, right? But they're not all atoms, right? Two of them are unshared pairs of electrons and two of them are atoms. So this is going to be bent and the angle is going to be a lot smaller than 109 degrees. Okay, so let's review really quickly. Here's bent, all right? If I have one more atom, Okay, imagine that this spring, remember, is your unshared pair of electrons. This is going to be trigonal pyramidal. Okay, and then I'm going to get one more, and that is tetrahedral. All right. Then, if I only have three things bound, three things bound to my central atom. Okay, that would be trigonal planar. Okay. If I have an unshared pair of electrons bound to that, it would be bent. And then finally, you get linear when you just have a straight line of them. Okay? So it's quite a bit of information, guys, but that's all you guys need to do. You need to fill in these notes. I'm not going to make you do any practice so far. Okay, we're going to do it in class together. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.